So I put the Savage Axis Heavy Barrel through uh, a string of modifications. Uh, of course, when I first went out to the range, it was just uh, uh, just purely stock. All I did was mount a scope and put a bipod on it. Um, the next round, I did a trigger job, as you can see here. Uh, put the cap screw on it, replaced the, the the trigger itself is the same. I just replaced the cap screw, put a cap screw on it, and replaced the spring. And I spec'd out the spring. I just didn't pull it off of a ballpoint pen or something. I wanted something that um, that I spec'd out and measurable. <laughs> but uh, I can get that in more detail if you want. Just uh, send me a note. Um, the stock was the major upgrade on this whole deal. Um, and you see I gave clearance for that uh, for the trigger when I added that cap screw on it there was a little ledge the mounting here that I had to file off to give clearance uh, if not then uh, uh, the trigger would be jamming and the, and the, uh, uh, the safety wouldn't work so I gave proper clearance that was no big deal um, well that second round of modifications I took it and I uh, bedded the stock especially up here next to the recoil lug um, and then upgraded the scope then I went back to the range and that time I was getting terrible groupings I was like you know what is going on did I not bed it properly did something go wrong and when I took it back and started looking at it I uh, actually had uh, the scope mount uh, came loose. Even though I had loctited it in, um, it had, uh, you know, vibrated or whatever it's, its way loose. So I went back and reseated everything, um, reseated the rings. I mean, I'm trying to make sure that's perfect. So I went back and, you know, added loctite everywhere, torqued it down properly. Um, and then came in also, um, and added the pillars to the stock. This rear one was uh, uh, bronze. This front one was steel. I did that just out of availability. But I kind of liked the bronze. It was easier to work with um, and size it down. Um, and you can see you have to be careful. If you, I don't know if you can see that there. But the wood was, it was so close. The OD of the, of the pillar was so close to the edge it was chipping off the wood. So I went back in and sealed it with epoxy. Uh, make sure that's not going to budge. Front one in, pretty, no problems. So now it is pillar bedded. It is rifled. Um, I mean, <laughs> it is pillar, pillar mounted and bedded. Um, what else did I do with the stock? Oh, uh, I filed a lot of this stuff down on the on the handle. Because it was when I first got it, my hand was, you know, sitting way back here, and I had, my finger was just barely touching the tip of the trigger. You know, I didn't have any room, so I filed it down to better fit my hand. Um, and then I uh, actually added a uh, um, another butt plate on it. Uh, the one that came with it was okay, just a half inch. This one didn't, you know, it's not that much bigger, but it is a little spongier. I think it'll, you know just minor details but uh, but I went ahead and replaced it um, sanded it down it was actually one that was made for uh, the Remington 700 so when I you know put it down I just cut it down to size filed everything down smooth um, what else the biggest thing because uh, my you know one round at the at the range I mean I didn't even keep the targets it was so bad but you can see the past videos that are where I touched base on that um, well, after I pillar mounted these things, I also looked and replaced uh, the trigger guard. So when you look at this, this is the plastic trigger guard that came with the Boyd stock. And when I was, you know, trying to torque everything down and seat it, um, you know, the plastic was just cracking off. So I got on the Boyd site and ordered the metal, and that was a big improvement. So now with the pillar 
with the pillars on there I've got metal to metal everything was you know, I'm able to torque it down um, you know I think I have it at 45 40 to 45 inch pounds uh, with no problem um, everything's seating really well um, the next big change was uh, with this mounting clip and when you take a look this is the clip that sits in the stock you torque it down and it gives the the mounting for your magazine so it's that mounting clip on the front well that last time at the range the more I shot it seemed like it was it was you know still uneasy and if you take a look um, it was starting to crack up so I decided to to get rid of uh, the last piece of plastic on there and at first I just got on my 3D printer uh, measured everything out uh, printed it out to make sure everything was in spec and that my uh, calculations were okay um, and it actually seated in pretty well and I, I could torque it down and this was holding up better than the original piece um, but that was just for a test I wanted to get rid of the plastic so I got on our handy dandy mill and made the piece out of aluminum so now when I seat it in and torque everything down uh, now now I've got metal on metal the magazine fits properly but after all this it you know I'm dying to go to the range see how it shoots um, and if I get some decent groupings then I'm going to start uh, developing the hand loads but that's where it sits right now So here are the results from the range. I took it out. This is um, this is the arrangement I had on the targets, um, and I used some of the past ammunition that I had before, uh, just so I can compare apples to apples. But uh, guess we'll start up here at the top. Uh, this was the uh, the Hornady American Whitetail, uh, 150 grain, and. I mean, it's not spectacular. It was kind of interesting. The, the first couple of shots were up here and then the next two. And I just did four shots patterns because that's all I had left. <laughs> so I went ahead and used them up. Um, another interesting note, when you're looking at the, at the targets, it, it kind of looks lopsided. But at the range, the actual, uh, the target was kind of tilted tilted over on the side so um, they were actually pretty level it would be kinda like looking at it this way so um, you know horizontally it was it was pretty straight but uh, I mean it was okay um, and it was I, I first attributed this to to win because it was it was gusting pretty hard. I mean, it was something like, you know, 16 mile an hour winds gusting up to 25, 30. Um, and at first I wasn't paying too much attention to it, but um, so between, so from here to here, counting those, it look, you know, about a 0.65, but overall about a 1.8 if you go the farthest. Um, the next was the Federal Fusion 165 grain and yeah I mean it was kind of scattered all over the place again 
um, Remington core lock. This is 180 grain. Um, pretty heavy stuff, and you can see it's starting to sink down on the target, but you know, the grouping is not too tight at all. But actually, if you look at a different video, um, I had pretty good luck with the Remington core lock uh, 150 grain just off the shelf. And uh, I think I had like a 0.78 or so, um, just straight out of the box. But I finally got some good groupings going on. Uh, this was using uh, the Bex, uh, yeah, using the Horny DA Max 160 grain. Um, I'd used it before, but this is by far the, the, the best groupings I was getting. Um, Farthest point to point, you know, and I did do a five shot group on this one on the, on both of these um, So we're looking at a point nine four Farthest points uh, Average hole to hole was like a point four four eight, but uh, but finally that was pretty decent. I was kind of um, Pleased to see that one after Testing all this ammunition. I was starting to question the the rifle but uh, and questioned my shooting too but um, but I guess it's it's real picky on the ammunition so so I kind of did too quick uh, just to verify it I stuck another target up there and and this was kind of rapid shooting and I know I yanked that one um, uh, and same thing up here I mean I was just it was pretty rapid shooting I was just ready to leave but uh, but you can see it's the groupings there it has potential um, so even with yanking one over it was still 1.3 uh, could have been a 0.62 could have been a duplicate of the other one um, and you can also see where I kind of adjusted the scope over after this one I went ahead and adjusted over uh, to the left starting at the bottom um, and then started to drop it down on the top target so uh, so the point of aim should be right on as far as uh, for this ammunition and I'll probably go forward um, and still use a Hornady Amax 168 grain and start uh, loading myself and try to optimize it but that's the results